with the latest on the Red Raiders at the big tournament. This is Red Raider Nation's Quest for the Championship, sponsored by Red Raider Outfitter. I wouldn't trade my path to coaching for anything, so whether it be junior college or the ABA or small college, uh, very, very blessed to be here and feel like I represent a lot of people on this stage uh, that have coached at schools that are really good coaches, that have coached great players, that have never had the chance under these lights. And the final four means the lights are as bright as they've ever been for the Red Raider Benz basketball program. Luckily, they have a national coach of the year now to help them deal with all of that. Hi everybody, I'm Brian Model, Eric Kelly alongside. So glad you're watching us again. We're live, don't forget, every night, 645 Central here from Lubbock, Texas, talking about everything dealing with Texas Tech and the Final Four. And the number one thing today, we have a Coach of the Year. Yeah, first ever, not only we as in Lubbock, Texas, the state of Texas has an AP Coach of the Year in basketball for the first time ever. Chris Beard taking home that honor. As I mentioned, first one in the state. Uh, crazy to think about that rise he's taken now from where he was even five years ago to oh, now sure. AP Coach of the Year. I mean, you think about uh, short trips in places like Angelo State, McMurray, Arkansas Little Rock, success all over the One place. One year at Arkansas, first year at D1 basketball and he goes 30 and 6. Right. And wins a first round game. And you know, something in the mix there and, and everybody started noticing and of course the UNLV noticed it and he was there, gave him really the best two and a half, three weeks of his life. And then ends up right back here in, in Lubbock, Texas, where he was, was a what, grad assistant and, and worked his way up through the channel at ranks in here with, with Coach Knight. And what a tremendous deal for him. And, you know, we, we've talked to everybody. We're going to talk to someone here in a little while who knows him from way back as well. But when you hear it from everyone, the same thing. He's never changed. He's always been a certain type of guy. And uh, the players love him. The fans love him, obviously. Yeah, obviously. Now. Clearly, and he, when he was accepting it, he, he was crazy. He, he mentioned some of the guys who have won this award previous. Wooden, mm. he mentioned getting his uh, pyramid of success when he was in high school to Wooden. Izzo, his next opponent, his mentor, Bob Knight, and he's like, it's crazy to think how a regular guy like me could be amongst those names. And it's amazing, and he's one of the guys, you know, some of the, the, the guys you really hear talk about uh, having a lot of uh, success, and he's one of them. They all mentioned the, the history of the game and other coaches and guys who came before him and how much have they studied and looked at what they've done. So a little something there for uh, everyone to think about as you, you get into coaching and, you know, you coach your kid's team and you think, it, maybe someday, I, here you go. You got to start looking way back first. Right now, here's a look at all today's headlines brought to you by our friends at Red Raider Outfitter in Lubbock and as expected. We talked about it. Red Raider coach Chris Beard named late this afternoon as the Associated Press Men's Basketball Coach of the Year, earning 20 of the 64 votes from their panel, and our thought was, what in the world are the other 44 people looking at there? Coach Bob Knight spoke briefly to a reporter from the New York Post this week saying that his former assistant, Coach Beard, has done, quote, pretty damn good, and then he's tickled to death about the work that Beard's doing at Tech. And the folks at Google passed along a map showing geotagged Twitter data to figure out who'll be rooting for whom on Saturday, more for betting purposes, I think, than everything else. They figured out, though, that Tech controls 10 states in our part of the country. But the most it, important state. Uh, well, yeah, right there in the middle, at the bottom, the big one. Michigan State controls 27 states at this point, but Google says that a lot of that, especially in the West, has to do with the, the fact that the Spartans beat Duke in their Elite Eight matchup, and people just can't stand to see Duke in the Final Four anymore. So yeah, exactly. Like. Everyone's thanking Michigan State, especially some right. people in North Carolina, very close to Durham. Now, Saturday's game with Michigan State might be, quote, just another basketball game after they tip off on the players, and I'm sure Beard will say that. But all the events leading up to the game are something completely different for this team. A lot of cameras, a lot of microphones today, and then the additional distraction of a national award, and our David Collier has had a camera in his hand all day in Minneapolis and joins us there from the, the stadium. David, how is the team handling all this new media pressure, handling everything having to do with their coach of the year and everything else going on there so far? Well, we'll start with the coach of the year. I, I do want to point out, you guys talked about all the success. And just to keep in mind, you mentioned the 30 wins that he had at Arkansas Little Rock. I'm not good at math, but I think he's doing pretty good in the 30 win department in four years as a Division One coach. And to think back in 1999, he was in his first year as a junior college coach. And Tom Izzo, the guy he'll go head to head against, was taking his Spartans to his first ever Final Four. So just to show you what type of coaching uh, greats we have on hand here. Tony Bennett also is one of coaches of the year as well. So uh, a, a great group of coaches to work from there and and to celebrate right after practice wrapped up. Actually, while they were on the practice floor, the announcement came for AP Coach of the Year. And when they went to the locker room, you could hear, hear the audible yell 
through the halls here at U.S. Bank Stadium as they went into the locker room and the players were told that Coach Beard had been named Coach of the Year and they clearly were ecstatic for their coach and actually ecstatic for the throngs of media here. I was told by the NCAA more than 2,000 when this game tips off on Saturday, credentialed media, and they were handling it well. They were enjoying the moment, and, you know, obviously you're going to be surprised at the number of media, but that certainly wasn't a problem today when talking to the players in the locker room. It's been pretty cool. I mean, I was just doing other media, and then I walked in here, and I was like, wow. I was like, this is kind of insane. I mean, You've worked so hard to get here, have fun while you're in it, but know in the back of your head, we got 40 minutes to, to National Championship Monday. Coach always said, uh, we're going to have a fun time. We're going uh, to gonna be us. As you see, we got things on the board over there that say be us and smell the roses. Yeah, we're going to enjoy life. I mean, we're going to enjoy the ride. It's who we are. But when it's time to play, it's time to play. And when it's time to practice, it's time to practice. So. We just got a two-part mission here, smell the roses, but also be us. And uh, be us is just four letters and two words to mean let's, let's ride the bus that got us here. Let's try to be disciplined and prepared, and let's practice really hard today. Ride the bus or ride the golf carts. One thing you, that you'll notice, uh, these players and coaches are being driven around on golf carts throughout the U.S. Bank Stadium tunnels here because it's so far to get from one point to the other so I'm sure the players are enjoying that aspect of it I, I there are media golf carts ro rolling around but few and far between as it should be we, we need to lose a few weight, uh, pounds here and there anyway right guys uh, well as we, it's easy for us to say because we're sitting here you know in Lubbock on the, the on the desk and everything and you guys are the one hauling equipment around every, all, everywhere all right so hey what's what's up for tomorrow now what's on the schedule for the team tomorrow uh, another round of media interviews with the with the the masses here in the locker room. Uh, we'll get to hear from Coach Beard again, and then the, the part that I think everybody wants to see is the actual team in action on the floor. They get out on the floor at one o'clock. It's a 50-minute workout session for them. They go from one to 150. Pretty sure Michigan State will follow on the court afterwards. Uh, Virginia and Auburn going earlier because they're playing the first national semifinal game on Saturday with the Red Raiders tipping off off against Michigan State to follow. So we'll get 50 minutes. Uh, we'll see how many Red Raider fans have made the trip here for that. It'll be interesting because right now, I will say this, tons of people could have shown up today. We've been inside the building since 9 this morning, so we're not sure how many are here. So it'll be nice to see. You mentioned those numbers of uh, people making the trip up here. I'm looking forward to see how many red uh, red and black uh, shirts and, and outfits and whatnot will be in the stands here at U.S. Bank Stadium for that first workout. I'm curious, David, you mentioned kind of we, we saw how they kind of reacted to a lot of the national media. What's a lot of the national media saying mm -hmm. about what they think about this Texas Tech team? I know you see a lot of it on Twitter. I was curious if you had maybe heard rumblings from other guys that you'd seen there uh, at the stadium. Well, I, the one thing I, I have heard is a, a lot of, during the uh, press conferences, a lot of talk of different players, and one of the names that popped up, not even to Tom Izzo, was Jared Culver, and they were talking about the fact that no real one-and-dones are here at this Final Four, but one of the names that they brought up for not going pro after one year was Jared Culver and how much he's progressed from one year to the next. I mean, we know he's going to be in the spotlight. He's one of those guys that's uh, up for most outstanding player in the NCAA tournament, along with Cassius Winston. But his name is being brought up quite a bit. I, I will say this, uh, right before we were on air here, Blair Kirkhoff, who writes uh, in Kansas City, I asked him if he had a vote for Coach of the Year. He said, no, I don't. But if I did, I would have made it 21. So uh, Kansas City certainly has taken notice, and I'm sure everybody here in uh, Minneapolis, at least uh, hopefully for Chris Beer and the Red Raiders, will take notice whenever they do finally take the court on Saturday. All right, David, we're going to leave you with a little bit of homework. We hear via Twitter that there may very well have been a special delivery made to the Red Raiders uh, here a little bit ago, courtesy of one Steph Curry NBA star. So we'll have you check on that for us and get back to us maybe tomorrow on that. Sound like a plan? Under Armour, Under Armour, Under Armour. Hmm. Makes sense. I, I will say this. I will say this. I don't know how that works, though, but I did hear something about extra, I, I don't, I don't want to say shoes, but I saw two of each. That, that's what I heard when walking by the locker room. So I think you might I'll be on to something. You might be on to something there. We'll put you to yeah. work. Put your, right. put your skills to work there. We'll talk to you soon, brother. We'll have it for you.
All right, you know, because we talk a lot about the economic impact of this type of event away from the court. But tech success is having some equally strong effects in shaping some young lives. Yeah, you see, they're role models every day on and off the court. Our Tori Larned visited with some of the kids of the Lubbock Boys and Girls Club who've been inspired by the hard work of the Red Raiders. They got a lot of character. And they got sportsmanship. Young players inspired by big dreams and a winning team. He was like real positive. He knew what he wanted. And like, and he knew like he can accomplish his dreams with the NBA. Kids at the Boys and Girls Club in East Lubbock play basketball every day and learn to be just like the Red Raiders from the Red Raiders themselves. You gotta, you gotta hustle. You gotta work hard. The way they dribble and shoot. And defense. He can make threes and dunk. Al Duval, the director at the Boys and Girls Club, says a few years ago, players started showing up for the kids. First, it was just coming to volunteer here and there. And then they, they saw that some of our kids had some real talent. And so they, they would come and play pickup ball with them. The players teaching them lessons both on and off the court. I think it's great to be able to actually, you know, see a role model actually come interact with you every day. You know, and you know, hey, it's possible. When they look ahead, they know someday they can be just like the Red Raiders. They made me feel nice. And man, uh, it made me feel like I want to be like one of them. I think I'm good enough to play college basketball. Tori Learned, KMAC News. Tori, thank you. Could not be more thrilled now to be sitting up here with former Red Raider star back in the 80s and early 2000s, Andy Ellis. Now still still back and coaching, still in and around basketball, but knows the program for something from the inside out. Good to see you, my friend. Good seeing you. Man, can you, can you quantify as, as a player who was really there at the start of the turnaround of the program, how far they've come from that day when we, we sat on the floor <laughs> of the arena and watched Coach Knight you know, be introduced uh, to, to now at the Final Four? Uh, it's, it's unbelievable. Um, you know, I thought... You know, there's been a turn where Coach Knight had it going and then it kind of slipped a little bit. And when Coach Beard came in, I, I was really excited. I, I knew he would be a great coach. And uh, just the turnaround, and you can see the atmosphere around the team has mm -hmm. changed. And uh, last year, to make the run that they did, you know, obviously everybody was on cloud nine we're, as far as we'd ever gone. And um, I was hopeful that, you know, this year, let's make it back to Sweet 16, something to carry it on, not a one hit wonder, kind of keep it going. Mm -hmm. And then, they just keep playing better and better. And so it's unbelievable the culture that he's built. Um, the players are so bought into it. You can watch them in the game. Look, these games aren't just another game. Like, they're bigger than that. And it, anybody that says that has never played at that kind of level. <laughs> right. Um, uh, under those kind of lights yeah, and media I mean, scrutiny. And it's tough. Like it's yeah. tough. There's a lot of nerves. And you can see them nervous at the games. But... What's unique about this team is they can get out of it by playing defense. Right. And most teams can't. They're trying to force shots, trying to get something to go in. These guys calm themselves down by going and playing defense and getting rebounds. And so that aspect right alone, I think, gives them a huge advantage in these huge games to just be able to calm themselves down and get the playing. My big, thing, my big question is, so you overlapped with Beard. I think you said your senior year. What do you remember about him, and, and has he seemed like he changed at all? I know a lot of people say he's the same type of guy as he was even back then. Yeah, absolutely. I think now he's in control. He, he's more in control. You know, when Coach Knight was running the team, nobody else was in control. Right. Um, but Beard is the same guy. He's, uh, you know, he's laid back. He's relaxed. But when it's time to get serious, he's a serious guy. He's an intense guy. People have seen that on the court, you know, while he's been here. But he's unbelievable as a player's coach. And, and a lot of people might not understand what that means. That means that you know as a player how much he cares about you and believes in you. And because of that, you'll give everything you have for him. And he can get on to you. He can be at you. And you're going to still get over it, take what he says, and move on and try to be better. And, and I think that's a huge aspect of this team of how they look like a family because of that. Sounds familiar. A coach that might like to get in your face once in a while. <laughs> where, where did you ever get with, it with yeah. that guy? I've had a few of those, but Coach Knight was, <laughs> he was good at that. Yeah, this, 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 slightly. <laughs> yeah, he kind of knew what he was doing there. But, you know, you mentioned Coach Beer being a player's coach. He's also been kind of a former player's coach in the sense that he's invited a lot of folks back and, and to be around the program and a part of the program. But what have you done or have you been able to do a lot of stuff? I know you've been very busy. But a lot of, uh, have you been able to talk to some of the guys on the team right now and, and be a part of that this situation? A little right? bit. You know, uh, it's tough when basketball season's going on because we're coaching and, right. and they're playing. But Beard is huge into that. He wants all the old guys to come back. And, you know, we had the alumni game last year. Right. That was a lot of fun. And, 
And uh, he's asked me to come to several other things. And I haven't gotten to go to quite as many as I'd like to. I'm going to try to do more as we go forward and try to schedule around it. Um, but I've gotten to talk to several of these guys. I came to a practice last year where he invited me up and, and just talked to the guys and kind of explain, you know, enjoy the moment. Yeah. Um, really, you, you put in a lot of work, so now go and enjoy what you're, you're reaping. You know, you've, you've done all the hard work. And so um, it's fun from that standpoint to be involved and, and still be around. And Beard's doing a great job of reaching out to guys who haven't been back in a long time. Yeah. I, I'm fortunate I live close. Mm -hmm. I can come back, come to games. And a lot of those guys can't and haven't felt like they were wanted back. And so it's great that Beard's doing that for the team. And now I think you start hearing from a lot of these guys now because now they're all excited. You can start yeah. filling it with everybody that's ever been involved with tech or <laughs> anything, and especially us old players. I'm curious. David earlier talked about how now all the lights are on them, the 2,000 credentialed media as opposed to four yeah. in Tulsa. From a player's perspective, how difficult is it to kind of get past that and get that kind of out of your mind? Because from a perspective of maybe someone who hasn't played, okay, yeah, it's easy. Once the lights turn on and, and, the, and the balls tip, you kind of forget about that. But from a player, how difficult is well, that? It's changed so much. Uh, in the last 15, 20 years, just in how much access there is anyway, mm -hmm. um, that that's kind of changed. But it's tough. I mean, when you get there and there's that many media people around, the, the two instances I can think of where I've been anywhere close to this was when we were at the Big 12 tournament and we heard that Coach Knight might be coming. Right. Um, when we lost that game, the media room was packed. Our locker room was packed. Everybody wanted to ask questions. And so it's kind of a tough situation. And then when Coach Knight came, you know, there that first year, everywhere we went, there was media just everywhere you could possibly go. So it's a tough situation in the, at the first because you're getting used to, wow, all these people are here. They sure. want to talk to us. There's so much more we have to do, included with getting ready for our game. Um, I think Beard, will, it, he'll start toning some of that down tomorrow and let them kind of get into a normal routine, you know, 24 hours before the game where they can start trying to get in some kind of semblance of what they've been doing. And then these guys have been focused all year. They, they know how to deal with it. Um, I, don't think, I don't think focus will be an issue in the game. If there's an issue, it's because Michigan State's really good. Um, yeah. Well, let's talk about Michigan State, though. Physical team. Um, what we keep hearing is that if you can get them to turn the ball over, you, you've got a good chance in there. What do you, what do you think? How, how will the defense play against that Michigan State bunch? I think our defense will play. Um, Michigan State, what scares me about Michigan State is they're almost a carbon copy of us. They've mm -hmm. got a little bigger guys inside, but other than that, they're just like us. So we're not going to bully them and out-tough them. Mm -hmm. um, that's kind of where Coach Beard got it from was Coach Izzo and his teams. And so we're not going to do that. They're a great rebounding team. I think our defense will be ready. We'll get after them. They haven't seen a defense like us because we're the best in the country. And so they're going to have to adjust to that just like we're going to have to adjust to playing a bigger team. Um, I thought we did well against Gonzaga there at halftime around that stretch of deciding, making adjustments and getting after mm -hmm. it. So I'm not worried about our guys playing defense. Obviously, the big key for Tech all year long is making shots. Can we yeah. go out and make shots? Can we move the ball? Can we move ourselves on offense? Get the motion going. And then, you know, it'll all come down, keep it close, get to halftime, and see who makes the best adjustments. These will probably be the two best staffs in the country at halftime in this game trying to make adjustments. Wow. I was gonna, you brought up guns. I was going to ask how much you think that may, may have prepared them for a team like Michigan State. They saw guys like Rui Hachimura, Brandon Clark, and it really seemed like you mentioned they adapted. Yeah. First half, Rui Hachimura got whatever he wanted. In the second half, the hands got faster balls were tipped out. How much do you think that prepares them for facing guys like Nick Ward, David Tillman? It's obviously going to make a huge difference because we had been able to switch all five positions all year, really. And nobody as a big guy had really, once they got the switch, just cleared it out and mm -hmm. gone inside. And Gonzaga, you could see that was their game plan. And they went to it. And so I think we learned a lot through the first half of, okay, where can we help? And if you would notice there in the second half, we would switch it still and Moretti would be down on one of the big guys. And as soon as that ball swung the other side, we were switching with whatever bigger guy was on the outside. And so they made their adjustments. And I think they're only gonna learn from that this week. And Coach Adams is, he's the best defensive mind maybe in all of basketball, but for sure in college basketball. And so he's had a week to prepare. I, our guys will be prepared. They, there won't be anything that Michigan State does that we're not ready for. Now, 
can we stop it? They're a great team. It, you never know. That's why you have to go out and play the games. Mm -hmm. But it'll be it'll be exciting and it'll be a lot of fun. You give Mark Adams a week to repair. It could be like Michigan. They said it felt like they were in, Texas Tech was in their huddle. Yeah, and yeah. we could see that again against Michigan State. Could well, be. those those all of these teams we've played. If you watch them. They have to feel like there's nine or ten guys out there yep. because everywhere we pass it, there's two or three guarding them, and they're just flustered. Everybody underestimates that defense, and until you're out there with it, you have no idea. Because I'm trying to think, when's the last time you've seen a suffocating defense like that lead a team, really push a team to a Final Four and to a national championship? It's been rough because Virginia's been the best defense, and this is the first time they've gotten there. So, right. been, been a lot of great shooters and a lot of great young shooters in a lot of these teams. Uh, they were kind of relied on and just do it on Yeah, offense. you see guys like Kemba Walker a right. lot lead a team to a championship, not a whole lot of times. You're used to seeing a defense like that lead yep. a team to a title. Andy Ellis, good to see you again. You too. Thanks good, for having good, me. Good luck with playing Christian and everything else going on in his life. New father down there. Or I say new. <laughs> almost two. Yeah. Goodness gracious. All right, hey, if you're looking for the latest Final Four information on Texas Tech and all the teams going to Minneapolis this week, you can just log on to our website, your local next our affiliate station here in Lubbock. That's everythinglubbock.com. And click on the link for the big tournament. Everything you need to amaze your friends before the start of the games on Saturday, including a link to this show and all the shows that we'll have here this week. Madam Speaker, I rise today to recognize the Red Raiders of Texas Tech and a new standard of excellence in West Texas. Sports teaches us a lot about the game of life. It teaches us that anything worth doing is worth working hard for. It teaches us the virtue of competition, the value of setting ambitious goals, and the necessity of making sacrifices to achieve them. Through sports, we learn how to work as a team, how to be resilient in the face of adversity, and to display grace in victory as well as defeat. No one embodies these traits better than Coach Beard and the Texas Tech men's basketball team who have earned their first trip to the Final Four. Yeah, it's Lubbock Congressman Jody Arrington on the floor of the U.S. House of Representatives Thursday. He actually went on from there for a while. It got a little louder and louder, and we like it. And our West Rappaport, of course, joins us from Minneapolis. He's there, too. He's been talking to politicians in Austin with Texas Tech ties. Wes, how excited are they about the Final Four trip? We saw Jody earlier, but how excited is everyone else about it as well? Well, uh, Eric and Brian, you know, it's, it's been a really exciting time. I was talking to some lawmakers uh, uh, who are Texas Tech alums, uh, a whole handful of them, and, and everybody is really excited. I mean, they are really buying into the buzz, and, and they're the ones kind of starting the buzz to a certain degree. I mean, uh, they were excited about the, the, the last couple of wins. They're, they're really proud of, of the Red Raider program, and, uh, you know, as, as Texas Tech's historic season uh, continues to, to press on, the university's red and black will stretch from one state capital here in up north to another state capital back home. All the Red Raiders down in Austin uh, here in the Texas House are so excited. Excited is an understatement for Tyler Republican Matt Schaefer this week. He's a two-time graduate of Texas Tech. For any Tech alum to see our team not only in the tournament but out there in a chance to win it all, it's just really exciting. On the short term it's given me a lot of heart trouble watching them play these games. State Representative Joe Moody got his law degree at Tech. Even though he says he's biased, the El Paso Democrat says more people may consider enrolling. Giving people that introduction to Texas Tech across the country could absolutely create more, uh, more opportunities for the for, for, the other, uh, for the other academic pursuits that are available at that campus and, and re helping them recruit students. Lubbock Republican John Frulo says the school's athletic achievements paved the way for more success. I think it's going to increase the availability of even better talent. Governor Greg Abbott is throwing his support behind the Red Raiders this week. For the, the men's Final Four, I got one thing to say, and that is wreck them. What's the business? you know, the economic impact of this, not only the, the Final Four, you know, coming to Texas, recognizing Texas, but also sending a team this year. Well, there's always a huge economic impact when you happen to host the NCAAs, but also, listen, it's good for the economy, it's good for the state, it's good for our profile when we have a Texas-based team participating in the Final Four. And the Governor Abbott tells me he wants everyone connected with the Texas Tech program to uh, understand just how proud the entire state of Texas is for this series of accomplishments. Hey, you betcha. Hey, hey, before we let you go, I know while the guys were in talking to the Red Raiders, you were red run over to talk to the Michigan State guys in their locker room to see. Does anybody have anything interesting to say about the, the Red Raiders? Well, you'll hear from, from them uh, throughout the week, uh, Brian, but, but one of the things that, that seemed to come up as, as we were chatting was, was, look, there are a lot of distractions that come 
uh, with a game like this and and uh, and a series of games like this um, and you know the, the the main thing that they were trying to do is is avoid the distractions um, you know it's it's uh, a coach who, who knows his way around the block you know he's been there before um, and and it's trying to make sure that that the players stay the course he, he's trying to make sure that that you know I asked one of them how do you make sure that, that you, you do your own thing and you kind of focus on yourself a little bit and, and, and focus on what's important to you, but also make sure you have that team chemistry, you have that cohesiveness. And he said it really, really boils down to making sure that you're on the same page with your teammates. Um, it, you can't win the game by yourself. You can't play the game by yourself. And so that's one of the, the factors that they are really looking at this week, um, you know, making sure that they have that unity uh, because Texas Tech is going to be a tough team to beat even though uh, Michigan State does have the upper hand in terms of the seating. So, all right, Wes Rappaport out there helping us with some coverage, doing a fantastic job as always. We will see you soon. All right, tomorrow on the webcast here, chat with former Red Raider legend and assistant coach Bubba Jennings. Yeah. And, and in Minneapolis, in the only open practice we get to see, the Red Raiders working out inside that massive U.S. Bank football stadium that's going to serve as the host site for the games Saturday and Monday. Got to get used to that. Also, most tech fans are going to start to get into town. We'll talk to some of those folks as well. It's going to be a lot of fun. As always, we thank you for watching. We're right back here tomorrow night, 645, on your Next Star Texas affiliate website. Share with your friends. Comment if you like. Now for Eric and the cast of thousands, I'm Brian Mubb. We'll see you tomorrow on Texas Tech's Quest for the Championship. With the latest on the Red Raiders at the big tournament, this is Red Raider Nation's Quest for the Championship, sponsored by Red Raider Outfitter.